Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Um, today, uh, it's been a long time since I shared with you something that has anything to do with sewing. Because we got this sewing machine, the Singer Heavy Duty, and I think uh, the model number of this is 4,232 something. Just don't quote me, but I think it's something like that. Anyway, one of the reasons why I stopped making those videos and I stopped, uh, you know, um, how do you say that? Uh, uh, She's practicing. The reason why I stopped practicing is I just got frustrated because at some point, sometimes, no matter what you do, you just, it, it, it just, you, you keep messing up. You keep messing up and you keep getting what we call the bird's nest on your fabric. Uh, the needle act, keep acting weird. Uh, the bobbing uh, acts weird or it gets jammed, the whole thing. Um, so I just, I, 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 I hit a, I hit a, a block in the, on the road, as they say it. I, I just, I didn't know how to fix it. I just, I thought, you know, I have all the settings, all the standard settings for a straight uh, stitch, but still, st I was still getting trouble. So this is a video for those of you that are beginners like me. Um, uh, and, you know, the, if you happen to sometimes just, you know, get as frustrated as I get sometimes. The thing is, there's always a problem, of course. The uh, sewing machine does not act up like that just for nothing. There's a problem. And the problem is usually uh, us, the beginners. We're still in, in a very ignorant uh, phase. We don't know everything about stuff. We don't know that there is, there are so many things that we should know before we start. But uh, you're probably, if you're watching this video, probably like me, usually throw out the manual and you just start doing your thing. Um, so... <laughs> Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. So what's the problem, guys? Why does the sewing machine sometimes frustrate you? Well, there is this book that I got from Dorothy. Dorothy is the mother of Tina. And um, we've known Tina through our channel, Tina and Bess. They are uh, wonderful people. And their mother, of course, just a wonderful human being. It's so funny. Um, so... Their mother, when she knew uh, about me, and I think she always uh, watches the video too with Tina and Bez, our video. Anyway, so when she uh, knew about me that I started um, sewing and I wanted, you know, to get into that sewing thing, she sent me this book. And I must admit, I haven't been uh, studying from this book a lot because the reason is I saw that it's called dressmaking. And because I have a little history with trying to get a book that teaches me how to sew men clothing, which I couldn't find on the internet, it's just, it's terrible. Like on the whole internet, there is not a book that I can find that can teach you how to make, uh, how to sew men clothing. So that uh, pissed me uh, off a little bit. So when I saw this book, I thought, well, you see, there it is again. There are only books about how to make dress dresses how to make women clothing um but i was wrong so dorothy i'm so sorry i haven't been studying from this book and i should have even though it says dressmaking but before it teaches you how to make a dress it actually teaches you some very very important general information about stuff that you need to know before you start to touch your sewing machine, I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna say before you start making cloth, uh, clothing. No, before you even start your sewing machine, stuff that you need to know. Uh, for example, so it teaches you some uh, names of basic uh, sewing uh, stuff that you need because you're gonna be needing all of them at some point, later or uh, sooner or later, in your project, and um, it just helps to know the name of what you need. Also, it also helps to know that they exist. It helps to know that the of the existence of this stuff, because if you don't know what's out there, you don't know what can help you. So I would say, I would suggest, just get one of these books. It doesn't have to be this one. Just get one of these books that actually teaches you the basics of sewing. And um, I know it sounds a little bit stupid, but guys, please invest your time in knowing the names of these these things. Once you know the name and you get to know, you get to know a little bit of what, what they do, you'll discover that there is a whole world of uh, stuff that can help you to make sewing easier, that you don't have to come up with everything by yourself. There's a lot of stuff that can help you, actually. So that's one thing. 
Another thing, and that's maybe the, the most important part of um, building up some sort of a knowledge library for yourself in your head, is you have you need to know that there are different needles and different threads for different fabrics. Something I was not really uh, aware of. I mean, I did have a hinge that maybe you cannot sew jeans with uh, thin needles, but I decided that, you know, I was going to be fine. Of course, I'm going to have some troubles, but uh, with the needle pushing through, but eventually I'm going to be fine, but I wasn't. So just realize that different fabrics behave differently here under the needle. And the different fabrics need to be treated differently. They need different needles and different threads. Something that I was not, I, I, I didn't care so much about. So guys, please, um, you know, educate yourself uh, about that also. Different needles, different needles have different numbers. And um, they, correspond, uh, they correspond with different threads, with different thickness. So needles and threads have different numbers and you have to do the right match. So you choose the fabric, then you have to find out what fabric that is, then find out what needle you should be using uh, on that fabric. And then you have to find out what thread you should be using. It's like the, the, the Holy Trinity. Honestly, those three you cannot uh, take apart. It's a match you have to, to combine like really... How do you say that? Uh, like really conscious. This is a very conscious choice you have to be making. Choose your fabric, then decide what needle, then decide what thickness of thread you should be using. Something else I didn't know, uh, for example, is that, I mean, look at this, for example. This is what they call the overlocker thread. It says here that, a, this is what it says here, a dull yarn on a larger reel designed to be used on the overlocker. This type of yarn is normally not strong enough to use on the sewing machine. Well, what do you know? Let me get it. I kept having trouble since I've been using this. See? Since I've been using this, I kept getting troubles. And Mike told me, maybe should, I should use something different. And again, the same mentality that I have. I was like, no, I'm sure it's fine. It's the same thread. What's the problem? That's before I educated myself about the difference in thread. So, um, so yeah, guys, it is really important. You cannot just wing it like willy-nilly and do whatever like I, I used to do with stuff. Usually I get away with this, but with this time I met my match. Um, so this, I was reading right now, just confirmed that this could be the, the trouble why, why my thread kept breaking because that's what happened here. My, my thread kept breaking because, for, for example, for a straight stitch, you need to have the tension uh, between four and five, somewhere between three and five, but ideally four. But even though it says that's just a universal uh, position for, uh, you know, like whatever, universal use of a uh, sewing machine, that still can be sometimes a little bit too much if you, for, for the thread if you don't have the right thread. So... The moral of this long story is there is a lot to learn about sewing, a lot of stuff out there, a lot of uh, kits, a lot of, um, you know, different tools that you can use to help yourself. You need to educate yourself about that. And the main thing is what I just said, just realize and know that there is this secret trinity, as I like to call it that you have to be aware of. First, choose your fabric, then choose the right needle. You cannot just go and use whatever needle happens to be installed in your sewing machine just because it's convenient for you. So choose the fabric, choose the right needle. And I mean, with right needle, I mean the right number. All those needles have numbers and they have different functions. Look, some of them look weird. You wouldn't guess that it's a needle, but they are, see? Choose the right number of the needle and then choose the right thickness of your thread. And educate yourself because the thread on itself is a category on itself also. Different threads are used for different materials. So um, there is a lot of um, matching you have to be doing before you start sewing, guys. 
think that's that's just the the, the thing. Um, one other thing that I want to say, I'm going to have to turn the light on. Something else that I discovered in my journey is that this is what they call the, the drop down bobble, bobbing. See, this is, you drop it down in there. This thing, let me show it to you. When everything else fails, when you have done everything that I just said, and you still have some troubles with your thread, you're still getting those so-called uh, bird nests, on, usually on the lower part of your stuff, so on the bottom. That means that the tension is loosened up a little bit. What you then do is, I cannot take it off, you guys, but do you see this yellow, yellow point there? That's actually in a screw. That yellow point right there. This you can take out. I'm not gonna do that right now. But you can take this out, and then that yellow thing right there is a screw, and you need to tighten it up a little bit, little by little. This is gonna be uh, time consuming because sometimes it takes a while before you find the right tension because you, you, you will, you, you're gonna have to tighten it up a little bit, a little bit, you just, you know, turn it clockwise until you've until everything else w works. So whatever you tie, you tie it up a little bit, you have to do a little bit of sewing again, and, and so on and so on, until you find that everything is perfect on whatever you're sewing, uh, your practice piece of uh, clothing that you're practicing on. So um, just know that that's also a solution and it can help. And that really did the trick also for me, for the hu a huge part of that, did help. So now I ordered, now that I know how important it is to have the right needles, I ordered some uh, from this brand. We're not sponsored. Uh, I just went on. Uh, not? No, we're not. <laughs> no. But if you are this company, feel free to sponsor us. <laughs> uh, premium quality line. And uh, they're really not that expensive. Really not expensive at all. Budget price. But I've been reading some reviews of people that have been using them and they're, they all gave them five stars for these needles. Uh, so they have this set where they give you all the different needles they need and they give you at least 10 of each. Like I said, all the needles have different number. So they give you at least 10 of each different number of needles. So just try to find them on the internet or maybe you can find something else that can offer you the same thing and get all of them because you never know when you're going to be using them. And that way, you know, at least that you'll have enough needles uh, around because, and that's the last thing I want to say, and then I'm going to stop here, you guys. Um, a needle is not something that can go on and on until it breaks off. That's what you read on the internet, but it's not true, you guys, because that sharp head of the needle, as time goes by, it does, um, how do you say that? Where? Yeah, it does wear. And that means that the head of the needle is not as the, the, the um, like the, the pointy point of an arrow that you want to have all the time, but it becomes more like, more like a fist that just, that just, just, how do you say that pound on your um, fabric, but it's not doing anything. It just damages the fabric because it's not aerodynamic anymore. It doesn't have that nice thin point that goes through the fabric. Instead, it has, it has some sort of a hammer that just pounds on your fabric and just damages it. So just don't wait for the needle to break off before you renew it. Uh, you know, usually they say that it's ideal after one or two projects to renew the needle. And project is a relative term because some projects can take for days or maybe a month. So, of course, the, the longer the project takes, the more often you should be used uh, renewing the needles. Okay, so these are some basic stuff. Again, thank you so much, Tina's uh, mother, Dorothy. Big hug from us. Thank you so much for this. Um, I knew that this will uh, always uh, uh, th that this would come handy at some point, and I love I love it. I love it. I mean, I love the first part of it, all of it, and then of course the dressmaking. Uh, I'm gonna skip, but even though even though this is mainly for making woman clothing, I did find some um, shirts that I can adapt a little bit and turn them into men uh, uh, shirts. You know, with buttons, and long sleeves, those kind of shirts. So,
But guys, if you happen to be watching this and you're surprised about what I just told you that I can find, they cannot find any books about how to make men clothing, to sew men clothing. If you're surprised because you know that there is a lot of, of that, please let me know what I can find them. We are living here in Holland, but it doesn't matter because I go on the same internet as you and I've been Googling them. And honestly, I can't find any books for the men depart uh, department sewing men clothes for some reason it's crazy but it's true there is more than enough for making dresses and women clothing but nothing for the men so if you happen to have what uh, happen to know what i can get one for a good price please tip us in the comment box below uh so for now guys this is just some basic stuff that i wanted to share with you um last bit is make sure you clean and you oil this part of your machine of course never in the middle of this because it will ruin your threads but make sure you always clean this um, usually one of these little brushes that come with the sewing machine one of the some something like this is more than enough to just gather the the dust out of it but do that uh, oil it every now and then renew the needles Make sure you have the right needle number. Make sure you have the right uh, thickness of the thread, the right thread number, and um, you should be good to, good to go. At least the first steps shouldn't become that hard if you consider all of this to begin with. So, all right, guys. So I'm going to do what I have to do here. We also got this from Tina and Bass, which I love. So I'm going to take a look at this um and good luck good luck if you guys have any tips something that i forgot please share that with us we can all benefit from that all right thank you so much for uh, watching guys good luck with your projects and do come back every now and then you never know what we post have a wonderful day for me and mike and the cats and see you guys in a different video guys here is your proof. Easy proof. Look at that. It's you can see it better on this side. See? This is a very fine fabric. This is something that I got for Tina because she loves Jaws and I made her a Christmas stocking out of this and then this got left. I was supposed to make her a bigger stocking, but something went wrong. I already got out the shape, so <laughs> sorry, Tina. But so this is something that I stumbled upon, and I use it to make sure to practice before I start doing my project. So, can you see that? It's a very very fine stitch on a very fine fabric. This is very fine fabric. It's almost see through. So this is the best that I could do. It's not perfect yet, see? It's not perfect. It's not like a perfect straight line, so I will have to work on that. But I don't know if I still have the, the other piece of fabric I was practicing on the other day. No, I can show it to you guys, but it was it was a mess. It was really a mess. And out of nothing, started to act weird. So I might just notice uh, rightfully so that it also is making a completely different sound. Perfect.